today with a new video and this video is all about why you or as a population people should be considering going vegan. A lot of people don't really get the point in going vegan. I guess a bit like I used to be before I kind of went vegetarian and vegan. I was just kind of naive to a lot of the facts behind you know the meat and dairy industry and what it's actually doing to our planet and our health and everything. So I just kind of wanted to put together this short little video in the hope that it will help some of you kind of get to understand a little bit better why people choose to go vegan and why maybe you should go vegan. If you've been sent this video by a friend or a family member, then thanks for clicking on it and watching. I'm sure they'll be really pleased that you did. And hopefully this video will help you to understand a little bit more about why they've made that lifestyle choice. Number one, the first reason why you should go vegan is because of the animals. 99% of people that you ask why you're vegan will probably come back to you and say because of animals and the cruelty involved in kind of their slaughter and the dairy industry. That's generally what's known as kind of an ethical vegan, someone who has made that lifestyle choice because of their love and compassion for animals. I am vegan for the animals and I decided to make that decision about three years ago now. I was initially vegetarian and I felt really happy being vegetarian from the day that I went vegetarian. I was like great, I'm doing an amazing thing. And then I started to realise that if I was doing vegetarianism for the animals then maybe I should consider veganism because actually dairy is cruel and that's something that had never entered my head before. I used to eat cheese, I used to drink milk, like everyone else, and I just used to think in my tiny little mind, oh, this must be a byproduct, you know, of the farm animals who are living this cushy little life out in the fields, you know, enjoying themselves. And I couldn't be any further from the truth. And when I found out about the cruelty in dairy, it really upset me. It really changed the way that I looked at what I was eating and because I was doing it for the animals, I just kind of felt like that was the next, next logical step for me and that if I did care about the animals then going vegan was really the best thing for me. I meet so many people and talk to so many people who claim to be animal lovers and you know what, I don't doubt that they are animal lovers. I used to be an animal loving meat eater but once you kind of think about that and get over that. You look back and realise how silly it was. I mean, I always felt like a hypocrite. I knew somewhere inside that what I was doing was wrong. I knew that I had to make a change, but it was almost like I didn't want to face up to it. I think I was scared about how much that was going to change my life. At the time, it was just something I couldn't conceive doing. I didn't really enjoy the texture of meat. I knew inside that meat was fleshed. It was from an animal being killed. It, had blood in it sometimes and it would actually turn my stomach. If I can eat something and get the same benefits from plants as I do from eating animals, then surely you're gonna opt for the option which doesn't involve a being being killed and hurt for that. If you're an animal lover or a pet lover like me, you can't sit there and deny that your animals and your pets don't feel emotions. So why is it okay for us to hurt one animal but keep another as a pet. This is another thing wrong with people's thinking in this country and in the world, you know, it's this whole speciesism thing. We've been brought up to believe that one animal's for eating and one's for keeping as a pet. But really, when you look at those animals, what's the difference? You probably understand the cruelty in eating meat, but a lot of people don't understand the cruelty in dairy. So I just kind of wanted to summarize a few points for you here. Milk is seen as cruel because the cows are artificially inseminated. Some people go as far as to say raped because in a way they are, like it's not their choice to get pregnant, it's not their choice to have what's done to them, you know, they have no say in it. They are continually made pregnant their whole life, so they're just completely producing milk all the time. They live in really horrible conditions. Some of the cows can't even turn around in the pens that they're living in. They can't, when they give birth to a baby cow, they can't even turn around to like give their baby a kiss. That is kind of the harsh reality of dairy. And what's even worse is that when they have a baby, that baby is taken away from them almost instantly put in a wheelbarrow and carted off down to the veal farm. 
pretty much. If it's a girl, it will join its mum in the dairy industry producing milk and being pregnated continually for its whole life. If it's a boy, it's carted off generally for veal. As far as eggs go, personally, eggs really gross me out. They're the one thing now that I used to eat probably a few times a week before and now they turn my stomach. I never really thought about what eggs were. I don't know what was wrong with me back then. Why didn't I think about what eggs were? I knew they come out of a chicken's bum. It didn't really kind of register in my mind that this was kind of like the result of a chicken's period. You know, you are in essence eating a chicken's period, which really grosses me out now. And even the sight of egg makes me feel sick. And I think the sad thing about the egg industry is, is that the majority, even when it says organic, raised in the UK, you think you're doing a good thing by buying that. But the sad reality is, is that a lot of these chickens don't even see daylight. Just imagine that existence, being in a cage, not seeing daylight, just continually laying eggs. You know, it's just ridiculous. It's just not a, not a nice way to live. And the other thing with eggs is the baby boy chicks are killed almost instantly because they're not seen as having any use. They're basically seen as useless. So some of you may have seen the images of you know, lots of baby chicks being crushed alive. Some of them are like minced up alive. They're on a conveyor belt and then they're minced up alive. Some of them are just put into sacks and suffocated like giant sacks of baby chicks. Maybe me telling you like isn't very really hard hitting and you just think, oh, whatever, it's all sensationalism. But when you see the pictures and you watch the films and you educate yourself about it, it really is a horrific sight. And all because you like the taste of eggs. So one of the surprise results for me from going vegan was when I found out actually what a vegan diet does for the environment. I do know a few people who say they have gone vegan for the environment more so than animals. One of the things that I was really interested in learning was that how a vegan diet benefits the environment. And this first come to light for me when I watched the film Cowspiracy. If any of you have got Netflix, I think it's available free on there. The film is very factual. It's, it's a real insight. It's a documentary about how eating meat and factory farming um, is impacting the world's environment on such a huge scale. It's such an interesting film and it really blew my mind when I first watched it because I'd never considered how meat and dairy impacts on the environment. I had no idea really. I in fact know one person who said they'd never go vegan in a million years. They watched Cowspiracy and that was it. It was like an instantaneous reaction to watching that film. If you think about all the people in the world and the mass production of meat and dairy, like how many animals are having to be farmed for that? So you look at that and then you look at how much land is being used to farm those animals and it is scary. Basically all the water that's used to farm the animals is ridiculous. Tons and tons and tons of water. And aside from that, they're actually cutting down rainforests to make land to farm animals, which is completely wrong. I'm telling you now that the best thing you can do for the environment is to go vegan. So I'm just gonna read you something off of the Vegan Society's website, which explains about the environment. The vast amount of grain feed required for meat production is a significant contributor to deforestation, habitat loss, and species extinction. In Brazil alone, the equivalent of 5.6 million acres of land is used to grow soybeans for animals in Europe. This land contributes to the developing world malnutrition by driving impoverished populations to grow cash crops for animal feed rather than food for themselves. It's actually crazy to think that there's people out there who could be starving to death and rather than growing food for themselves, they're growing food for animals who are being farmed. That's just mind blowing. I found some of the facts from Cowspiracy that I really wanted to share with you. Animal agriculture is responsible for 18% of greenhouse gas emissions, more than the combined exhaust from all transportation. That's all transportation in the entire world. Livestock and their byproducts account for at least 32,000 million tonnes of carbon dioxide, CO2, per year, or 51% of all worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. Animal agriculture water consumption ranges from 34 to 76 trillion gallons annually. That is a lot of water. 
agriculture is responsible for 80 to 90 percent of US water consumption. 2,500 gallons of water are needed to produce one pound of beef. And this fact blows my mind. Livestock or livestock feed occupies a third of the Earth's ice-free land. A third, that's huge. Livestock itself covers 45% of the Earth's total land. We could see fishless oceans by 2048. That is scary. I mean, I could go on and on. This, this list of facts is massive. It's horrendous. If you want to find out more of these facts and have a read for yourself or watch the film, go to cowspiracy.com. But like I say, the film is also available on Netflix should you want to watch it there. I feel so much better knowing that my lifestyle choices are having a real positive impact on the world that I live in. Many people also go vegan for health reasons. A lot of people, I believe in the US, are now told to go vegan for health reasons. And that's because meat and dairy is really contributing towards health problems, heart attacks, heart disease, and also, you know, red meat has been highlighted in the UK quite a lot recently for being really bad for us. And, you know, my understanding is that red meat is really quite difficult for our system to digest. And when you eat red meat, it, it kind of lingers around in your bowel for a little while, like maybe even a few days, and it kind of starts rotting. Even though I haven't gone vegan for health reasons myself, as soon as I went vegetarian, I noticed my IBS went away almost completely. Not to give too much information, but I used to really struggle going to the toilet regularly, and I'm talking about the number twos. And as soon as I made the change and went vegetarian, I haven't had an IBS episode since. So that's kind of my own personal experience of why going vegetarian and vegan has helped my health. I also know, you know, obviously by not eating milk and dairy, that that's only having a good impact on my health, you know. You can't really be unhealthy from eating the healthiest things that the earth produces. Like it doesn't really get much more healthier than plants. I don't kind of say that I'm the world's healthiest vegan. You know, I, I eat a lot of vegan junk food, but I know my own experiences of how going vegetarian and vegan has improved my health. You're not gonna get heart disease from eating plants. I've also had experience of someone in my family who's been kind of vegetarian their whole life, going for a colonoscopy and they were told by the doctor that they had the healthiest bowel they'd seen in a long, long time. And I guess that's because when you're eating meat and stuff, it does mess up your system. It's doing something to your bowel. Just taking a little bit more information off the Vegan Society's website, it says on here that plant-based diets tend to be low in saturated fat, high in fiber, and packed with antioxidants, helping mitigate some of the world's biggest health issues like obesity, heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. And one of the things um, that I often get kind of started on in an argument or, I don't know, like your typical kind of the way conversations go is like, oh, what about your protein? What about your calcium? Things like that. So I'm just gonna read some of the foods that you can actually get these other nutrients from. Like you, you can get nutrients from things other than meat and dairy, believe it or not. Um, so you can get calcium and vitamin D from soya, rice and oat drinks, set tofu, sesame seeds and tahini, pulses, brown and white bread, because in the UK, calcium is actually added to bread by law, dried fruit, raisins, prunes, figs, dried apricots. So that's quite a lot of stuff you can get calcium from that you probably would have never even imagined you could get calcium from. Vegan sources of iron include pulses, wholemeal bread and flour, breakfast cereals fortified with iron, dark green leafy vegetables such as watercress broccoli and spring greens. B12 is another also really important one and I think if you are thinking about going vegan you need to make sure that you're definitely getting your uh, vitamin B12 so you need to kind of plan your meals so that you do make sure that you are getting that vitamin but that can also be found in breakfast cereals fortified with B12, unsweetened soya drinks fortified with vitamin B12, yeast extracts such as marmite. Sources of omega-3 fatty acids include flaxseed or linseed oil, rapeseed oil, soya oil, soya based foods such as tofu and walnuts. I think people like to use these kind of health reasons as a reason not to go vegan, but 
quite a lot of the population, I think half a million in the UK now, are surviving and flourishing on a vegan diet. So the final reason for going vegan, I touched on it briefly earlier, would be for people. Humanity, like everyone in the world. And it kind of carries on from the whole environment theme that, you know, there's people in the world who are starving, who are making crops for livestock feed. That's just not right. We need to reduce the demand for meat. We need to reduce the livestock demand. And you may be thinking, well, what difference is it gonna make? Like, if me on my own goes vegan or vegetarian, what difference am I really gonna make to the world and to the environment and to humanity? Well, you know, you're gonna make a huge difference. And also, going vegan and vegetarian does have a ripple effect. When I first went vegetarian, my husband was a meat eater. A year down the line, when I went vegan, my husband then went vegetarian. And it does have a ripple effect. You know, we go to families' houses and they're cooking us vegetarian products now and they're experimenting with them themselves and they're realizing that they don't taste that bad and actually they're a good substitution for meat if they don't want to meet, eat meat all the time. And it, whatever way you look at it, it has a ripple effect and it does enter someone else's mind and it does get them thinking about it. I will tell you some facts now as to how you're making a difference by going vegan. A person who eats a vegan diet saves 1,100 of gallons of water a day, 45 pounds of grain a day, 30 feet of forested land a day, 20 pounds of CO2 equivalent a day, and one animal's life every day. That's enough reason for me on my own. <laughs> So thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to drop a line below. Um, subscribe if you haven't done already. And I think it would be really great if you're watching this and if you can think of one person in your life who may be on the verge of going vegetarian or maybe vegetarian and thinking about going vegan, I think it would be really great if you shared this link to this video with them, pop them an email and just say, I think you should watch this video and let me know what you think. If you're one of those people, thanks for getting to the end and watching this video and I really hope it's changed the way that you think about things. This is actually the first of a two-parter. Um, the video that's going to follow this one is going to be my top tips on going vegan. So in this video I've given you the reasons why you should go vegan and in the next video I'm going to give you tips on how to make the transition over to a vegan lifestyle or plant-based if you don't want to kind of do the whole vegan thing. See you next time. Bye.